You know who else is back? No. Do you do you remember Ezekiel and and his his brother Elrod and the brother Elias, of course. Well, he he was gone. We were just we were seeing Ezekiel and then Elrod. Well, Elias is back. The lights are dim. They come up on the ring, and there is Elias in the ring, and he says, "You can't imagine how glad I am to be back." Little double entendre there. And he comments on, unfortunately, his younger brother's career was cut tragically short, kind of few snickers. And again, it's bad gimmick rehab. They are actually having, they have put themselves into, well, Vince put them into position where they're actually having to come out and basically, in their own way, apologize to people and say, no, we're not going to do this anymore. Here, we're back to the way it's supposed to be. We're sorry for the jarring and disconcerting weeks we put you through where you didn't understand what the fuck was going on. Bobby Ewing in the shower. That's what it is. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 embarrassing. But nevertheless, as soon as he starts, here comes Matt Riddle. And I'm saying, oh, my God, now, wait a minute. I thought Elias was supposed to be a baby face, but apparently they believe that Matt Riddle is so popular that he'll give poor Elias, who's been out there exposed like an idiot as Ezekiel and Elrod, that he'll give Elias a little rub because Riddle's so popular. So they have them do some comedic banter and interplay because Riddle has brought bongos out. Now, Elias is in the ring. By the way, I'm sure he would have been back quicker, but he had to actually grow a beard. He couldn't just fucking come back and kick the shit out of somebody else and say, fuck it, I'm not doing that anymore. He had to grow a beard before he could be Elias. So Elias is in front of keyboards and he's got guitars leaned up and Riddle brings out some bongos and wants to play with him. So you want to you wanna hit my bong, bro? That's not a, that's not a double entendre. There, it's it was just specifically to make Riddle sound like a stoner, but there was no witticism there because it's a bongo, not a bong. Anyway, so they did this comedic interplay where Elias promised Riddle that sometime they could play together, and that pleased Riddle and warmed the cockles of his heart. And so he just sat there cross-legged in the ring and watched Elias as Elias started on the keyboard to play a new song that he's written. Now, this is where I was hoping, Brian, that you had hung in there because I'm, I've, I've listened to a lot of music, but I've never played any nor written any. So I'm sort of in the position that Tony Khan is in as a wrestling booker. I've watched it on TV, but I never actually did it. So I was hoping you could tell me whether Elias, because he did a better job than I could do playing the keyboard. Because I can't play the keyboard. The only musical instrument I can play is the radio. But I was hoping you would be able to tell me whether he actually did a good job at it for anybody or just a good job for somebody that can't do it at all. Because it wasn't, I, I didn't get the Liberace, Elton John in the early 70s, you know, fucking Jerry Lee Lewis kind of vibe from him on the keyboard. Did you get a Gene Okerlund kind of vibe from him on the keyboard? No, not even a Tutti Frutti kind of thing. But he's playing the keyboard, and guess who comes out? Who comes out after Riddle already came out? Yes, yes. I don't know. Seth Franklin Rollins. Oh, no. Because Seth Franklin Rollins is in the main event that they're going to flow right into for the U.S. title with Matt Riddle. So as Seth Franklin Rollins comes out, well, again, then it's time for Elias to go, and they go to break, and they come back, and now Riddle's still there. And have we not seen this match like eight fucking times recently? Yeah, they just had a feud. Well, they're, it's, they're still pissed. Nothing's been settled. So Elias went down to ringside, by the way. I should say he did stick around. He didn't just leave, but he acquiesced and gave up his, his status in the ring for all of this. So they have this match. And by the way, uh, uh, Patrick, the new announcer, 
um, has noted that the United States title was first won by Harley Race in 1975. So they're using, I guess they have been, the Greensboro lineage for the United States title because they absorbed it from WCW, right? Be more fitting if they use the Sheik lineage. That would be funny, but but here's where I was going with this. Okay, if they're using the Greensboro lineage for the Crockett United States title, Harley Race won the tournament in the Greensboro Coliseum in 1975, right? We know that much. So that's the lineage they're using. Do you know who else's careers that that United States title that was first won by Harley Race in Greensboro in 1975, whose careers it has helped launch? Oh, Ric Flair, Rick Steamboat. I mean, just those are the first two in the 70s I can think of. Okay, well, according to, to Patrick, it was Ric Flair, Steve Austin, and John Cena. Really? Tell me when Steve Austin would have ever been the United States champion. In 1994? Thought he was the TV champion. He was the TV champion... First, when he got there, he had a feud with Wyndham. He had some great matches with Barry Wyndham on TV. Well, out of nowhere, two out of three falls matches. And then in 94, he feuded with Steamboat. I think that was over the U.S. title. So it did launch his career. It launched him right out the door of WCW. He was fired right after he was the, <laughs> the U.S. champion. It launched his career in the sense that he had already been a champion, been in the Dangerous Alliance, and been in the Hollywood Blondes. Other than that, okay. it launched his career. So anyway, in this match, finally, both Riddle and Rollins were down, and Seth rolls out to the floor where Elias is standing there awkwardly. Because now, here's what they've done. As both guys in the match are down, and Seth rolls out on the floor to try to get some space and recuperate, but now the floor camera is framing Seth and Elias in the picture, even though Elias is just standing there and hadn't done anything and hadn't been referred to by Seth or whatever at that point, when they frame both the guys in the picture, you know something's going to happen between them, right? And of course, guess what? After a while, they just stood there, and as I said, uh, poor Elias stood there awkwardly, and then Seth is saying, hit me, hit me. So he's asking Elias, this big, giant, 260-pound fucking guy standing next to him to punch him in the face so that he can get disqualified against Matt Riddle, who was, at that point, laying on his face in the fucking ring, selling. <laughs> okay, hit me, hit me, but Elias won't hit him. So then fucking Seth Franklin Rollins says, well, fuck you, then, and he super kicks Elias. Boom. And at that point, he goes back in the ring, but Riddle takes back over. And he starts doing some shit to Seth Franklin Rollins. But then finally, Riddle goes for the RKO. But just at this point, Elias has got up from that one super kick about 45 seconds ago. And he comes in the ring to kick the shit out of Seth Franklin Rollins. And Seth Franklin Rollins pushes Matt Riddle into Elias. Boom! And they collide. And then he hits Riddle with the curb stomp, one, two, three. And then he curb stomps Elias. And then he goes to curb stomp Matt Riddle again, and guess who shows up, Brian? Who shows up to save Matt Riddle from Seth Rollins? Who shows up to save both Matt Riddle and Elias from... Seth Franklin Rollins. Seth Franklin Rollins. Uh, who have we not seen on the show this so week? It wouldn't be a main eventer like Roman Reigns. I'm not sure. Mustafa Ali! Oh, that's a surprise. The same guy <laughs> that got the shit kicked out of him earlier came back out, and this time he kicked the shit out of Seth Franklin Rollins, and Seth ran through the crowd away from ringside to get away from the vengeful clutches of Mustafa Ali. So they're going to try to get this guy over in a top spot. He's running off Seth Rollins. And this, again, what the fuck? He's six inches shorter, 30 pounds lighter, and he was he was dressed like he was delivering newspapers for his fucking kid. There you go. That's a surprise. 
I mean, I understand gimmick rehab and a lot of that's happening right now, but have people seen him as a main eventer? Again, I haven't followed his career, Mustafa Ali, too closely. Do people see him as a main eventer? Well, I, I mean, somebody sees somebody somewhere as a main eventer, no matter who they are. The question is, how many? And I would say that the the odds are pretty good that that's a small number. Well, that was raw, as raw as it gets. It sure was. <laughs> <laughs>